Well, the Biden administration is pledging to sell only zero emission vehicles in medium and heavy duty classes by 2040, 2040. The pledge is part of an agreement signed at the UN's COP27 summit, uh, currently underway, focused on fighting climate change. The news is set to boost commercial electric vehicle makers like GM's Bright Drop. And joining us now with more is Travis Katz, Bright Drop CEO and president. Um, Travis, good to talk to you today ahead of the Investor Day. Certainly a lot of investors looking for an update on the outlook in terms of demand. You have been very busy with partnerships with the likes of FedEx and whatnot. Where do things stand right now? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Akiko. So this is a very exciting moment uh, in history that we're living through, a transformation in the way that we get around from traditional internal combustion engines to EVs. And it's really one of the bright spots in the market where we're seeing demand for EVs continuing to grow despite all the sort of uh, clouds on the horizon uh, because they're better vehicles in all sorts of ways. So at Bright Drop, we are on a roll. We're seeing tons of customer demands. So we make all electric delivery vans, the Zebo vans. We make electric carts uh, for last mile delivery. And we're really aiming at decarbonizing, uh, you know, the way you get your Amazon packages and your groceries and things like that. Uh, big customers, Walmart, FedEx, Verizon, they're all coming to us uh, because not only have they made pledges to their customers that they're going to go zero emissions, but it's actually good for business. You know, the average customer, we estimate, is going to save about $10,000 per vehicle per year when they switch from a diesel step van to a bright drop Zevo. So that's real money. Um, when you add into that the potential effects of uh, the EV tax credits, there could never be a better time to switch. And we're really seeing that reflected in the market. Yeah, to what extent, uh, when you think about some of those tax credits, obviously a lot of it is for, for the, the consumer car, but you're dealing with last mile delivery. You know, how much of the agenda that we have seen out of DC and the credits that come with it have, have accelerated business for you? Yeah, so so the IRA uh, bill that was passed last year in Congress, I think has been, it's going to be a great uh sort of stimulus for the overall EV market. So like I said, even without the IRA, we're seeing incredible amounts of demand. So the number of EVs bought uh, doubled uh, from last year to this year, and it doubled the year before that. So we're really doubling every year, even without those, those tax credits. When you add those tax credit in, credits in, it's just going to create more incentive for people to make the move now. Like there can never be a better time to, to be making the switch. You know, it's interesting to see, um, at least at the corporate level, how this thing, you know, the, this focus on just uh, reducing emissions has kind of shifted. You know, on the one hand, the long term goal, yes, remains intact. But at the same time, uh, there's a lot of pressure from investors, especially in this macro environment, to say, well, do we need to go so big on this right now? in this moment. Uh, when you talk about accelerating um, and seeing these orders come in, to what extent have you seen that expansion? I mean, you mentioned sort of the, the, the big names that we're accustomed to, like a Walmart as well as FedEx, but um, can you kind of give us insight on, on some other names that you've gotten into the full tier that, that could be a bit surprising? Uh, well, so I don't have new names that I can share today, but what I can say, you know, if you look at all the big players uh, in last mile delivery, whether it's FedEx or Amazon or Walmart, they've all made these pledges already that they are going to get to carbon neutral by 2035 or 2040. Everyone's made that commitment already. What's great is, in the moment that we're at is it, we're finally at a point, you know, the the, the curves have cost, the, the cost curves have crossed. Uh, where they're actually going to save money doing it. So it's not just about doing the right thing for the planet, but also it's smart business. We're in the we're in the very early innings here, obviously, um, and we're just about to start. We're we're going to be opening uh, our uh, Cami facility where we're manufacturing these at the end of the year. We're about to see a huge uptick uh, across the board in in EV sales. So we're going to start to see the scale really coming into play. And we think as more customers get into these vehicles the more they realize not only are they better from an economic perspective, but they require less maintenance um, and they're more pleasant to drive. So we have a bunch, we have 150 vehicles uh, on the road with FedEx today in Los Angeles. It's one of the largest installations of EVs uh, in the country. And I'll tell you, when we go out there, the drivers love driving these things. They're quiet. They're not the loud rattling noises. There's no fumes. Uh, the ergonomics are designed better. They don't want to go back. And in a time when there are labor shortages in these markets, figuring out how do you make this job a, a more pleasant job, EVs are really helping with that too. So it really is a win-win for everyone. 
Yeah, I will say I have noticed that out here in L.A. I, I've spotted a few of those vehicles. Um, I want to get back to that announcement that we got out of COP27 over in Egypt, the U.S. signing on to this pledge to go 100 percent EV emission free by 2040 in heavy and medium duty cars. How realistic is that goal when you consider the sourcing, the parts, labor, everything that's necessary to get that pipeline going? So, so there's there's still some challenges that need to be worked out, uh, you know, on the medium and heavy duty, and that work is being done. So we are a wholly owned subsidiary of General Motors. General Motors is investing very heavily in its Ultium battery platform, also investing in fuel cell technology. Um, there's still some debates about which of those is going to win out for the the heavy duty uh, the heavy duty market. But the the big thing you're trying to get to is those vehicles are heavy and they need to go long distances. And so you need to make sure you've got the right energy density. A um, lot of investment going in here, and I think lots of great things to come. I, I think 2040 is very doable, and I expect we will see this happen. Okay, we'll be watching. Bright Drop CEO and President Travis Katz, good to have you.